now let me uh, go back to where the, the, the phrase, my dress, my choice was coined from. It was coined from when women got tired of their, uh, um, of their constitutional rights being violated, especially in public spaces. And it's sad that in this day and age, it has been trivialized to an, a, a discussion about what women are wearing instead of looking at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is the gross violation of women, the sexualization of women, and the policing of women's bodies. Our constitution clearly says equality and freedom from discrimination, that is Article 4, and, and enjoyment of rights and fundamental freedoms. This brings us to the question, what is decent and who is decent and who decides that? Maybe my worthy opponent will answer that. This, uh, this is all about policing women's bodies. When somebody says no one has a right to choose what to eat, first, you've already violated a constitutional right of women. Policing of women's bodies and what women wear has also given perpetrators of very heinous crimes an excuse of uh, uh, the giving reasons why they, uh, they performed those crimes, which is really sad in this day and age. Uh, these restrictions on what women wear have, have made women vulnerable to patriarchy, and also it has led to women being sexualized which is very wrong because this sexualization of women sadly never used to exist, especially if we look back before colonia colonization in Kenya. The colonialists came to Kenya, brought, brought in Christianity. If you look back at our traditional African community, women were free to wear whatever they want. Even today, some communities like the Turukana, the Pokot, you go there, you'll see these beautif beautiful beaded women wearing their, their, their skirts, their short skirts, and, and uh, not even covering their, themselves, but they're enjoying their, their bodies. And colonization brought, came with uh, the gospel and Christianity, which preached the gospel of purity. This gospel of purity decided that what, we use, what as Africans we wear is, is indecent, which is really sad. And it's sad that all that is still continuing today. So it means that your colonialism, colonialism is still existing up to this day. Uh, the perpetrators of uh, violence towards women in public spaces, in private spaces, at workplace. It means that when, when, when people decide even what you're going to wear in workplaces and in, our, in a country which strives for economic emancipation of women, it's very sad because your performance as a woman at work has now been trivialized to what you are wearing rather than what you can deliver. Uh, Women have, have a right to choose what they wear, and that should not be a, 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 um, sh that should not be anybody's choice. Or if you if if you wake up today and decide I'm going to wear this, nobody should judge you on what you are wearing, and the community or whatever the society says about decency, it's somebody's choice. It's not. If, if today I wake up in the morning and decide this is decent for me, the same constitution which protects me and my rights to wear this is the same constitution which protects, for example, like my worthy opponent of wearing what she's wearing. I think we are missing the bigger picture here. And as a country, a democracy, which we want to pride ourselves, we've moved on. It is sad that sometimes I get sad, as today I'm standing here, I'm still discussing this topic of why women have a right to choose. Uh, but I'm hoping today, as I move forward, we are going to bury this discussion, and maybe my worthy opponent will come to my side and s help me support this motion, which clearly states my dress is my choice since I'm a grown woman. And I sit at the grown woman's table, and I'm hoping my fellow women too 
we are sitting at the grown women table. Thank you.